Hi, it's Josh from Ride Talk. I'm here at RSA with Mike Milner, the CTO of Immunio. Mike, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Do you want to give a bit of background to yourself and um, Immunio? Yeah, so Immunio provides web application security as a service. You throw us into your web app, it takes two minutes, and we provide you best of breed protection against all the common web attacks. From that point, should we start with the connected home? And there's been a lot of talk recently about the, the various threats and the vulnerabilities. What do you think can be done to reassure citizens that their connected devices are safe? Well, largely, I don't think they are safe. Uh, not to be all doom and gloom, but I think it's probably more important to focus on educating consumers. Increasingly, consumers should be making choices based on the security and trust they have in companies. So not strictly, there's been a lot of breaches, and I think consumers need to start making decisions based on who they trust to hold their data. And on the, on the topic of that data, there's, there's been a lot of big landmark cases in the last year, safe harbor ruling, the San Bernardino iPhone. Um, what do you think the future holds for data protection after these events? In today's world, data tends to move across the world. It's hard to really think about data in terms of nationality and localization. I think it's important that we do reach agreements to have data mobility across countries, because increasingly it's it is a connected world, and this data is going to be everywhere, and we need to make sure we can protect it no matter where it is. Sure. And what about if we're looking towards the, the kind of financial world? Uh, banks are becoming more digitalized, we've got the challenger banks coming in, we've got cryptocurrencies. Do you think the security can keep up with these technological developments? The banks have the biggest advantage because for them, security directly equates to dollars. So it's very easy for them to say, investing this much in security will save us this much in fraud loss. So I think they'll always be continuing to invest and probably leading the way and encouraging all the companies here at RSA to continue to develop. And I think they stand the best chance to continue to push security forward. If we take it away from the technological side and we look towards the kind of the human aspects of information security and the cyber, the cyber skills shortage, uh, which a lot of people are talking about at the moment, how do you think that's going to influence the market as we go through the next kind of five years? You can already see it today influencing security companies. Uh, there's a huge demand for security skills in the industry to continue producing this new technology. And in terms of the, the larger world, I think it's going to continue becoming an issue. I mean, companies and countries are investing to build their technical skills and to build their technical talent pool. And I think that's going to be even more important going forward. Every company today is a software company, which means every company has to be concerned about software security. If you were speaking to a 17-year-old version of yourself, what do you think would be the reasons to entice that person into the security industry? Well, today it's often easy to talk about the money. I mean, security professionals are very expensive to hire, very hard to find. So certainly a lucrative career is always interesting and potentially enticing, but if you're going into it just for the money, it's probably the wrong reason and you might not be as satisfied as you think you will. Instead, look at it as the challenge of really protecting companies and protecting potentially your country against huge, massive amounts of attack from new and emerging technologies. I mean, it's an exciting field to be in, no question. One thing to kind of close off the interview, um, we talk a lot about the kind of the darker side, the, the, the scarier side of the InfoSec world. What is there that you think, oh, I'm, really, I'm really optimistic about that over the next, the next year or two? Certainly I'm slightly biased. I think the continued investment into new technologies uh, to protect consumers is hugely important. Um, the faster we can innovate and develop new technologies to broadly protect the web and users of the web, the better state we'll be in. And we're starting, continuing to see that. Thanks for joining us, Mike. For more great thought leadership, head to brightalk.com.